morning everyone. I think I'm just having a bit of a quiet morning today, although it's not very late yet, it's only quarter past nine, but we woke up like at about six because the sun was rising and it was coming right in through the windows, which was actually very lovely. We're in a gorgeous little bay, perfectly protected. So what have you been up to this morning? Editing. One of us has, has got to do some work in Yeah, this I know. I know. <laughs> Thank God for you, otherwise Someone nothing... Someone some work in this bloody Weren't for Nick, nothing would get done. Isn't that right, my dear? I can't do it. I'm so close. And I'm gonna take a trail in the world. But I can love you. Yeah, I'm gonna love you. I'll give you the world of what I've got. Today, what are we doing today? Well, we've been wanting to go over the other side there, it's Baron Joey Beach, it's called, for some time. Today is so calm and peaceful so far, and there's not very much boat traffic either. And so I said to Nick, I reckon we can dinghy over there. And he agrees. The dinghy adventure. Nick is just <laughs> barbecuing some toast right now, <laughs> as you do, for breakfast. And once he's fed, we will uh, make sure we've got plenty of fuel in the tank. And then we'll head over to the other side and um, go for an explore. Have a look at the beach, go for a little walk, see what's over there. So we just parked our dinghy on a uh, little jetty. No idea whether we're allowed to use that jetty for our dinghy. It was attached to a very expensive looking restaurant. So we have just walked across a little kind of spit and found the most beautiful beach. It is just absolutely stunning. Very, very beautiful. But if you can see this scene behind me, I think this is about as quintessentially Australian as you can get, to be honest. My childhood dreams. Yeah, you're flaming galas. <laughs> We're gonna get back to the dinghy, go back across the uh, the bay, and uh, I can go and see some wallabies. Jeez, I can't tell you how good that breeze is through those windows. <laughs> Lunch? You want a sandwich? Toast a sandwich? Oh, it's a usually done this slow. Am I being stupid? This barbecue hasn't moved position, has it? Because I feel like that's kind of a different position. Barbecue pulls out. How? A gastro. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that's better. Let's try that again. So cool. To boil pasta. That's it. Mm. Everything else has been done on that. Yeah. So today we are sailing back to Sydney. 
We have been in pit water for some time now and it's been absolutely beautiful. It's just been such a special experience. But, you know, today we've got uh, the weather to head back down to Sydney. And so that's what we're gonna do. It's just a couple of hours sail, but it's looking pretty uh, gray and rainy at the moment. And I reckon that if we uh, get back to Sydney without getting wet, then we'll be very lucky. And actually, just between you and me, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how it is to sail a boat in the rain without hopefully getting wet because when it rained on Ruby Rose then essentially we just spent the whole day wet <laughs> and miserable. Are you ready? All right we're off. Good morning. Uh, an early start for us. Well relatively early. Look. As with all sailing, the weather is never exactly where you want it. It's never going to be 15 knots, a bat of the beam um, in bright sunshine. Today we've got it on the nose and it's going to rain. But nonetheless, we're on a boat, so that's better than being in an office. Again, okay, we're looking at the wind shift today. <clears throat> we're currently inside protected water. We've got to go through the cut. So we expect the swell to pick up. You'll know what happened yesterday is the transit between the two sides of the cut opened up. You put the swell would come in. so. If the swell does pick up, um, we probably expect to find that over the next half a mile, um, we will stop getting the protection of the land. You all right? Yeah, it's just a chop coming through the... Uh... Through the cart. Yeah. A bit bouncy. But hopefully as we... Uh get through the cart and then kind of turn to starboard a little bit. Yeah, it's really shallow where we are. Yeah. So once we get out, then um, I think it'll be a lot more comfortable. Not the most comfortable part of sailing. Oh. Is that two kayaks? Yep. Well, I must say, I wasn't expecting it to be quite so choppy today, <laughs> but um, at least it, you know, gives us a good idea of uh, how the boat handles the conditions. Um, so I suppose it's, uh, it's useful from that perspective. Not much fun, but useful. We get a lot of questions about helm position in all the interviews and reviews we did about all those catamarans. We talk about helm position as much as we do ventilation. It's really one thing that's super important to us. And just to articulate, you know, exactly why we want a helm position like this can be shown in what we're doing now. Wind conditions today, we have got about 15, it's only 15 knots of apparent. So it's about 45 degrees off, uh, off port bow. But there's some short chop and you can see the horizon bobbing up and down behind me. The wave period must be, I don't know, even in the chop, six, seven seconds. Which basically means that every six, seven seconds, this boat goes up and down. So the issue is that when you are on passage, it is tiring. There's just Therese and I on this passage, but even if you had five or six people, it is tiring. We always wanted a helm position that does a couple of things. One that is protected. These side clears are to roll up and fold away, but essentially there's spray coming over the deck. I'm completely, completely protected. That's the first thing. Second thing is, everyone talks about visibility on these boats. Can you see from this helm position? Yes, I can. With this window down, I have no problem. There's no, retra no refraction, no reflection, no nothing. It has not been a problem. The way that this boat is bucking around, it really kind of like reiterates that you want a you want a helm position which is as close to the center point of this boat as possible close to the center line in all axes the only way this could be better would be if it was a little bit that way but because catamarans don't actually move you know don't rock that much whoo, it, it's this it's not a motion that i have to deal with so if we were up higher we would have far more amplified pendulum effect from the waves. It would be more uncomfortable. 
It is personal preference. And what I would say is that if we were sailing the Sea of Abacos in the Bahamas, wanting to see reefs and more than anything else, a flybridge is brilliant. Protected sailing in the Mediterranean where you've got another area size. Again, perfect. A lot of ocean passages where the weather can be variable, where you probably are going to be short-handed and where you want to be protected, this can't be beaten. It can't be beaten. The more comfortable my crew are, the more rested my crew are, and I am, the easier our passages are. Just a little bit on passage, on a pretty lumpy passage, as to why we continually talk about these helm positions. Anyway, I think a little bit of my cracker just came up into my throat. We will um, continue our passage onwards to Sydney. Sudden, we've gone from like a slightly bumpy ride out there to absolutely calm like a mill pond in here so we're gonna find a little spot to drop the anchor and then we need to provision this afternoon so we'll take the dinghy ashore and go to the shops this afternoon try and find somewhere to, um, to leave the dinghy for an hour or two but first find somewhere to drop the anchor all right anchor down Found ourselves a nice little spot. We've actually been here before. Um, this is called Store Beach, and behind me, over that little headland, is Manly. That's nice, nice and calm after a quite a bumpy, bouncy passage. And Nick, do you want a lovely cup of tea? What kind of tea do you want, Nick? I'm looking forward to going ashore. We've not been ashore in quite. We've been ashore, but we haven't actually like been anywhere populated. We haven't been anywhere that's had houses and shops and people. Certainly nowhere that's had four full bars of 4G, which I have at the moment, which is uh, quite exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to go ashore to go for a little walk to see what Manly has to offer. Watch out for the uh, paddle waters, babe. So we uh, found somewhere to put the dinghy, although it was part of the, it was like the sailing club jetty. There's a big sign saying members only, trespassers will be prosecuted. So we asked uh, a woman at the sailing club, we said, can we just leave it for 20 minutes while we go get some food? And she's like, as long as you're back within 20 minutes, that's okay. Three hours later after yeah. uh, JB Hi-Fi and a big bucket of Nando's. Yeah, I'm assuming there's somewhere else to leave the dinghy in here, but I, I'm yet to find out where. So anyway, that's fine for the moment. We just need a little bit of food and then we can uh, go back to the boat. Ice cream. Uh, <laughs> 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 